missionary Deborah Norsey. Amen. Won't we give God some praise? Glory to God. He has been wonderful with us this week, and we owe him to give him praise. Amen. I honor the Lord for being here this morning. I thank him for the assignment. I thank God for our leaders. I honor them today, our bishop, Bishop Winbush, and Mother Winbush. I honor our supervisor, Bishop Gatlin, and our dean this morning. And to all the people of God, we're talking about disaster plans. I tell you what, when I got the assignment and I, I readily said, yes, Dean, <laughs> but when I looked at the material, I said, oh, Lord, what are you doing with me with this? But every message that has come forth on this week has been a confirmation to what God is saying. And we are in a disastrous times, but what the Lord said to me is to tell the saints of God, you should not be surprised. You should not be surprised. And if you're in the word of God, the word of God has told us what we can expect. But many times we become lazy when it comes to the word of God. Now, in the book of Matthews, uh, the sixth chapter, verse 33, I think it is, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, it told us ahead of that not to worry about what we're going to put on, what we're going to eat, and all of those things. But it was letting us know that we could be assured that we are provided for. Now, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, many times people take that and they say it, but I think they don't have clear understanding what it's saying. Seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness is his right way of us as kingdom of God people to be able to be sustained in the time that we're living in. Because we are in the world, but we're not of the world. And I know a lot of the world has come in. But the Lord said to me to remind you that you are kingdom of God people. And when you are in the kingdom of God, he has a prescription of living for us that will guarantee us some things that the world won't even have guarantee of because we are his kingdom people. Let me read a little through the master plan, Christian preparedness survivalism. Today, a strange paradox exists. What looks like the fulfillment of prophecy is everywhere. Unrest in the Middle East, the rise of a European super state, the alignment of Gog and Magog, forming of a national ID and gateways through biotechnology that could unleash upon earth pestilence of biblical proportions. People from all three of the world's great religions see these developments as potential almonds of an end time scenario leading to the apocalypse. Yet, many believers in God, especially in America, are indifferent to the need to prepare for the unexpected. Now, how do you prepare for the unexpected? Because, see, the thing that we're Facing is not a flesh thing. The unexpected things that are orchestrated are spiritual. And in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, it says that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Be not conformed to the world, 
be not conformed to the world. What, what is that saying? Take away your stinking thinking and put on the righteous thinking of the word of God. So that's why I go back to Matthew's telling us that we ought to be seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, we must understand, first of all, that we've already been made righteous. How many of you know you're already righteous? But what you have to really grip in your mind to understanding is you did not make yourself righteous. Mm -mm. It's not your ushering in the ursher board. It's not be being on the prayer team. Mm -mm. None of that makes us righteous. The righteousness that came upon us came through the blood of the Lamb of God. His blood, when we accept him as Lord and Savior of our lives, we are now in right standing with God. So we have become the righteousness of God. And how many know the scripture also says that the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them? I'm trying to get scripture in you because, see, you need the word to stand on. Isaiah prophesied years ago about the time that we're living in. But he also reminded us that the grass wither and the flowers fade away. But the word of God will stand forever. So you need to stand on what God is saying to us in the time that we are living in. We're talking about the Middle East and it talks about all of the things that are happening there and the biochemical warfare and all of those things. And listen to me. The things that are happening in the Middle East, if you understand scripture and go back to Old Testament, you will find out that it came through that uh, Abraham mess up. Yes, 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 yes. And see, it's important that you go Old Testament to be able to be brought into New Testament. Because they all connect. And I know you're hearing some false teachings now that said you don't have to listen to the Old Testament. But if you don't hear the Old Testament, you won't be lined up with what's going on right now. The Middle East and all of the chaos that is going on there will forever be going on. It was a mess up that when Abraham was promised that he would, he would have that first seed of promise from God that would be Isaac. And his wife told him to go in and lay with that handmaiden. And he had that other kid. Uh, that's where the mess up came in at. You had two nations that rose up out of the womb. But, but the Lord reminded Abraham that that baby is not what I told you about. You have a promise that will come forth. And so... We're, we're, we must get grips with covenant, covenant, covenant. Old Testament covenant, we ought to be glad we're not there. Oh, yes, we ought to be glad we're not there. Because if we fell under the law of Old Testament covenant, I'm afraid we'd have been gone. Huh? But now that we are under the covenant of Jesus Christ, we have a new covenant that gives us assurance in the day that we live in that God is going to take care of us. Now, you don't have to believe it because I, listen at what I'm saying. The, the New Testament covenant is made by Jesus Christ. Listen, it was done before the foundation of the world. And if you're not spiritual, you're not going to grip these things. That's why it's important that you have a prayer life. Prayer on top of everything, all that we have been experiencing here this week is because of that prayer set up from the door all the way to the prayer room, to the war room. And if you don't have a prayer life, you will be shaken at all of these things that will come and you will fear as the world fear. So you have to come from among the world. And when I say come from among the world, I'm not talking about leave from among them because we are the salt of the earth and we are supposed to be salty enough to stay there that they will come out of the world and we draw them into this great kingdom of God. 
So I'm going back to, I'm trying to give you basis of we are the kingdom of God in the earth. We are the kingdom of God in the earth. You are the kingdom of God. I'm trying to get you out of church into kingdom. Because there is a lot of churches that are up now. And they have nothing to do with God. But the church that you must have assurance to understand is that Jesus Christ is your church. Yes, yes. He's who your life is foundational on. He is the church that in this day it does not matter what happens. We have victory in life and in death. Yes, yes, yes. I know those young people got killed the other day because they said they were Christians. But when I laid down last night, the Lord said, Deborah, their families are grieving and they're hurting. Everybody else is hurt. But because they stood up for me, when they went down, they came up. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so, you know, I wrestled with this, Sister Dean, when I got in that room. I wrestled with doing this. Because when God gave it to him, I'm like, Lord, that don't fit to me. It don't fit to me. So I got in the room and tried to make something fit. I wore myself out in that room, going through scripture. The Lord said, Deborah, rest. I've already given you. I've already given it to you. So I don't want you to be disturbed by the Middle East, but I want you to pray. Yes, 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 yes. I want you to continue to pray because there are believers over there in the Middle East. Believe it or not, we sitting here crying and whining over seats and positions and titles. And some of our Christian sisters and brothers are being beheaded over there for standing up for Jesus and not caring about a title. Yes, they are. So we need to be mindful. We need to take on the mind of Christ. The scripture says, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. So in order to be able to stand in the day that we're in, you're going to have to take your mind off and put on the mind of Christ. Now, how do we put on the mind of Christ? The Lord Jesus said any time that he said anything, he said, I say nothing except the Father says it to me. And when he taught, when he did all of the miraculous things that he did, it was because he had just come up from off the mountain in prayer. And, and, and let me tell y'all something. Y'all may not think prayer is anything, but prayer is not, a, it's not easy because the flesh don't want to pray. Prayer is a spiritual thing. And if every time that we need to pray, it is now. War room. War room. There's war going on everywhere, but there's a war in the spirit realm that the saints need to be conscious of. That we need to stay on our battle positions in prayer, warring against the spirits that are coming against the church of Jesus Christ. As women of God, we must realize that during this urgent call, we need a disaster plan which will present ideas about how to prepare to survive the various disasters, large and small, that we may encounter. Our view must be biblical of how to prepare for a disaster, large and small, so that the individual Christians, the Christian family, and the local church can give glory to God in the midst of trying times. Defend and provide for our families and church. Being a blessing to other believers who were not as prepared to reach out to the lost with the gospel while serving him in a crisis. And to preserve a Christian civilization for the future. We need to be prepared. Now, I can give you an example of prayer causing you to be prepared. When Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, it brought an eye open to the nation. Mm -hmm. And everybody was talking about the people left stranded. And it was a pitiful thing. But as I looked out at it, 
I had an assignment of, at, at our local church to speak. And the Lord said to me, Deborah, the sun is shining on the outside. This was two weeks after that. He said, but I'm going to hit Lake Charles. And I'm going to tear it up. He said, call your family together and come up with a plan. Yes, 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 it did. And, and not just that, I had been in revival a week before in Cameron with Ella Porter. And when I left there, the Lord told me, don't go back. He said, because they will not hear, and I'm going to destroy that place. And it was hit the hardest in Rita. They're still having a hard time getting it back together. But when you pray, when you look at the signs and you look out at what is happening, God will speak to you. And so what he did, he spoke it in my spirit, and I have a, I am a seer. My, my, my family is a family of seers. And I have a sister that's under me. She has a stronger gift of seeing than I do. And she called me the Sunday I left from speaking. They called me Peanut. She said, Peanut, did the Lord tell you anything? I said, yeah, he told me to call the family together. And let's come up with an evacuation plan because he's going to hit late, Charles. She said, I was at the kitchen running water, and I heard the Lord says that water is running. Y'all store up some water because I'm going to hit. So we called a meeting, got the heads of every house together. And when Rita came, we were prepared. We, we didn't just take our family. Anybody that we told that would come were to meet at our house. And we... When it was time, I told my sons, you know, they, not, they wasn't saved. I say, if y'all got anything y'all want to bring, pack it up, the little stuff, but don't bring everything. Just pack up your stuff. Oh, mama, we ain't packing up nothing. So when they told, got time to evacuate, they didn't have their stuff. When we got, we got to Atlanta, Georgia, that's where my daughter lives, my son dove across the bed. He said, mama, you told us. I said, no, God told you. And y'all need to recognize God speaking. It wasn't me that told you. God told us. But God will warn you before destruction. God will not allow anything to come up on his people without warning. But we have to have a listening ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in this last hour. We have to listen. And we kept, we've getting too busy. Too busy. We got a lot of busyness going on that has nothing to do with God. And we're too busy to pray. We're too busy. We're too busy and we can't hear. And the enemy, even there's a scripture said that the enemy is going to wear the people of God out. And he has been doing it with busyness. But even with that going to on that after that reader, God blessed us. Even we brought the dog, sister, my son's dog. When we got there, we didn't know where we were going to stay. I have nephews there, but it was 12 carloads of us that followed. And when we got there, we got to a station and Sugar, y'all know Sugar? Her nephew lived there and we had no idea that they were going there. But she called my daughter-in-law to see where we were because she figured we'd go to Georgia because my daughter was there. She said we had just got into a little area where she was, and she called, and she said they got some hotel rooms. It may not be enough for all, but y'all can pile up in the hotel room. Well, we was right around the corner from it getting gas. Mother, we got there. And uh, the people from New Orleans had been so horrible that the people didn't want to see Louisiana and Georgia. They didn't want, the Red Cross had made up their mind they weren't going to fool with no more Louisiana people. And so when we got there, my son said, Mama, he said, um, we need to get in touch with the Red Cross. And he, somebody heard him, and the lady said, oh, baby, they're not going to give y'all no help. These New Orleans people have messed y'all up. But when the news came on, it was Rob Marciano, used to be our news anchor here. 
Joseph said, Mom, I'm going to call Rob Marciano. He called him. He set up a personal favor that we meet the Red Cross. And so they were supposed to come to us, but they got so scared that the New Orleans people was going to jump them. My, my husband and my son said, we'll come to y'all. When they got there, people were coming out turned away. Y'all can turn around and go back. They're not going to help y'all. My husband and them kept on going. They helped us when they wouldn't help nobody else. <laughs> I'm trying to show you that if you pray, if you are in the vein of God, he makes ways for you. Listen, God knows the storm is going to come before the storm comes. God knows what's going to happen this day before you even got up today. And as the people of God, we have to get in our mind that whatever happens in this day, everything God did not plan. But God has a plan in the plan for what the enemy planned to come against your life. Yes, he does. So, so, so don't listen. Prayer is the key. War in prayer. A lot of people went to see War Room. And, and I was just excited about War Room. I said, people are going black and white everywhere they're going. I said, they're going to get it. And I was teaching war conferences in different places. And I, my daughter called me and she said, Mama, you ought to go see that War Room. It looked like you wrote it. And I said, no, baby. I said, well, if it looked like that, I'm not going to go because I got some more war conference, and I don't want them to think I got the message from them, so I didn't. But uh, we have a new, some new members, and the lady is here today. And they went to see it, and her husband called me. First lady, we went to see War Room. You sure you didn't write the, the movie? I said, bro, I wish I would have so I could have gotten that money. But it's all right. I, I, I want the message to be out there. But to get excited about going to see War Room and you leave there and go, don't go war, you are wasting your time. You didn't do nothing but go and get entertained. But we are warriors in the kingdom of God. And I'm trying to tell you not to be complacent and get in the world system and get lazy and relax. Because, you know, the world is doing this and the world is doing that. But remember, we are not of the world. We are of the kingdom of the most high and mighty God. And in the book of Revelation, it tells us that John saw a beast. And that beast had seven heads. And what that beast represents is seven nations. Seven kingdoms. Seven kingdoms, y'all listen to me, that's going to rise up, but they're going to be bad kingdoms. And they're already rising up. ISIS has risen up. Those are evil kingdoms and not under God. But the last kingdom, the seventh one, would be the kingdom of God. And God is going to wipe out every one of those kingdoms. I'm trying to get you not to get Oh, it's fearful in the time that we are living in. We have no need to fear. Get, listen, don't fear. And I want you to know God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And the word even said that at the end, God's going to judge the fearful and the unbelieving. So what the Lord is looking for now is a kingdom of God church. Uh, we're going to have to close the door onto some of this stuff that's trying to get in our kingdom because it's not rightfully there. And so we've got to do like Noah did. Uh, we're going to have to build up the ark. Where's the ark now? We are the ark of the Lord. Uh, we house the spirit. Uh, and so... When we are the ark of God, uh, safety lies on the inside of us called the Holy Ghost. We have access to the power of God operating in these horrible times and situations. That's why Ephesians tells us that according to the power 
that worketh in us, the Holy Ghost power works through prayer. Yes, 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 yes. I, I got to keep telling y'all about prayer because you got to get a prayer life. You got to get a warrior's prayer life. I'm not talking about a pity party life. I'm not talking about gimme gimme life. I'm talking about a position in war in prayer in the time that we are living in. In the book, it says that Noah, Bible passages teeth that teach preparing for the future and for for disaster. Now, in Genesis, the sixth chapter and the ninth verse, and if you go up to that eighth verse, Noah shows example of God's grace being on his life. He had the grace of God upon him and upon one man that decided to commit to honoring God in the midst of evil, doing all it felt like doing, God says, I'm going to spare you. Yes, he did. He gave him uh, instructions. He gave him directions of what to do. And even he warned the people what God said that he would do. But they would not hear because they were caught up in their flesh. Let me tell y'all something, saints of God. This flesh thing that many times that you're putting on the devil is not the devil. Many times it's nothing more but this flesh that we're living in wanting to have its way. But I want y'all to know that the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, it's not democracy. No, 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 no. It's not a democracy in the kingdom of God. You can't have it your way. You can't vote it your way. It's going to be the king's way or no way at all. But when you honor the way of the king, he will honor you with some benefits that the world cannot have. Glory to God. And what is that for? See, see, we, we go back to the covenant there. The Lord made a covenant with Abraham that because you have been committed to me, because you have respected me, because you have honored me, I'm going to spare you and your family. I am going to do it. And then at the end of it, he says, I'm going to stick a bow in the sky to remind the world that I won't destroy it with water any longer but it's going to be destroyed with fire the next time. So that lets you know that God knew what's going to happen before it happens. So there's nothing new under the sun. Jesus was mourned about Jerusalem. I'm going to give you all some scriptures to write down. And I want you to write them, and you're going to have to go home and read them. If we go back to the teachings of Jesus Christ, we will have full knowledge of what God is doing. Because he said it, he prophesied it, he said what would be. Jesus mourned about Jerusalem, and let me tell you why he did. That's in the 13th chapter of St. Luke. Verses 31 through 35. I'm not going to read it all because it's going to take up the time. That's in the 13th chapter of St. Luke. Verse 31 through 35. He was warned while he went into Jerusalem that someone seek to take his life. But he knew the plan of God for his life. And he knew that the time was not yet. So he did some detouring around where he had to go. Because he had to go directly to the plan of God for us to be where we are today. Y'all hear what I'm saying? There are a lot of things that could have happened to Jesus where he was. But he was always warned by God what was coming up. And that same warning I'm saying to us comes to us. When you have an assignment from God, it doesn't matter what it looks like and what the world is falling apart in. Your assignment will be fulfilled in God. So Jesus knew his assignment and he detoured. So that was 
disaster. That would have been a disaster for him to get killed at that time because he had to be whipped. Yeah, 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 he had to go through the whipping. Oh, it sounds horrible what he went through, but thank God he went through it. If every process that he went through had not been done, we would not have the privileges and the uh, conveniences that we have now through the Lord. He brought us back in right standing with God uh, with every part of what he went through. So if he was upset about Jerusalem and it mourned him, it mourns me when I see the people being beheaded. That lets you know that it's not a new dilemma, but there have been new demonic weapons crafted by the hands of men that are evil that have created these threats. But we have to go back again to what Jesus did. He was whipped. First, he was lied on. You're going to be lied on. He was abused when he was whipped. But had he not gone through all of that process, we wouldn't have this covenant that I'm telling y'all about now. But he was whipped, and then he died. He dropped his head before and said, it is finished. Mm. What he finished is, Everything that you have need of right now has been completed through the work of Jesus Christ. Everything, all of your needs has been taken care of. So when he went down in the grave, he didn't stay that long. Just the time God had set. I know sometimes it seemed long in those dead places, in those dark places. But I want you to understand they won't be very long. They won't be very long. But the, the third day, my God, he got up. He got up with all power in his hand. And not only did he get up with his hand, he had the keys to the gates of hell. He made an open show of this evil that we're dealing with. So it's important that you're in this kingdom to get the privileges of these demons that we're dealing with being taken care of because you can't take care of them on your own. Second Corinthians, the 10th chapter says, our weapons are not kernel, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We relying on the strength of God to do what we do. That's why you pray. When you're going to him and you've got that impossible situation going on, you go back to what the word says that nothing shall be impossible with God. Is God with you? I'm trying to get you out of what's going on to get you where we need, what we need to be doing. Because sometimes we're so stuck on what's going on, we're not doing what we need to be doing. You see, when Noah got the ark together, he called his family in. Mm -hmm. And we got some family. I'm not leaving mine behind. You can leave yours behind you all you want to. But we got some families that we need to be able to call in in the time that we're living in. How are we going to call them in? Through the power of God. You're not expecting them to come in on their own. You didn't come in on your own. No, you didn't. He said, the scripture said, except I draw you by my power, you would not have come in. So I'm trying to get you to understand that we have been privileged and we have been honored through Jesus Christ. He gave us a new covenant, a better covenant, a far better covenant that we can stand on, that we don't have to really worry about tomorrow. No, we don't. No, we don't. The world tells you to worry. That's why so many saints are full of sicknesses and diseases. Because worry has captive their bodies. Oh, y'all ain't never been there? 
I've been there. But once I got a revelation of the word of God and began to walk in the word of God, I began to walk away from what's going on because I realized that it was a place for me to step up higher in the Lord. Uh, I know we had some glitches and things that happened even with us, with this conference. And, and the devil thought he had us, but he didn't. See, what he didn't understand was that when you attack our leaders, you didn't do nothing but cause us to pray harder. And as we prayed harder, we've experienced the move of God harder. So don't, don't, don't take what happens to you lightly. Spiritual things like keeping our eyes on Jesus, not on building bigger barns for the wrong reason. Now I'm going to go back to this. We know of the man that built the barns and he, they were full. But he didn't help nobody. Jesus don't mind us having stuff. But when he told Abraham under the Abrahamic covenant, I'm going to bless you. He said, I'm going to bless you that you be a blessing. So the wealth and all of the things that the Lord has for us now in this season is for now. That we can be a blessing to those that look upon. Those that are in darkness will come to the church in this last hour. Because the world system is running out of its goods. But we are to be empowering ourselves to what the word says. And receiving every blessing that Jesus died for us to have. That when they are naked, we can put clothes on them. When they are hungry, we can feed them. I'm not thinking about another big house. I'm not thinking about another big car. But I want to, when people come to me and they have a need, uh, that the covenant be fulfilled in my hand. Uh, that Deborah... I'm going to cause you to be a blessing. That's why we need the wealth. That's why we need the wealth. In Jesus Christ at a time when the world is short of everything, because we have the grace of God on us, God will not allow us to fall short in anything if we believe him. You've got to first believe God. Uh, you've got to first have confidence in God. When the missionary gave a testimony about her sickness and about what God did for her, I knew it was confirmation because we're in a time where people are saying, you can't have this, you can't have that. This system is falling. That system is falling. But she said to us, we're not on that system. We're in the kingdom of God, uh, and the kingdom of God, there's no shortage. And if we run out, all God has to do is say, let there be. And there it is. Glory to God. We've got to start thinking kingdom minded. We think too much about church. We think too much about church. Jesus made clear that you understood that he was the church. And you can be in the church having a good time and yet be defeated in your life. Yet be in light because you have not taken this word and let it become rhema to your life. He said to us that even peerless times was going to come in the book of 2 Timothy in the last days. Peerless times going to come. Men loving men. Women love, yeah, it, that Timothy was wrote a long time ago. But that should let you know that God knew the end before the beginning. He knew it all. He know what's going to be all in between it. But if we stay in his ark of covenant, which is Jesus Christ, uh, he has promised to protect us. Glory to God. I'm going to give Jesus let the religious folk know. What the kingdom of God was. That's going to be in Luke the 17th chapter. Verse 20 through 37. Even it talks about Lot. There even in that New Testament scripture. Lot had to eventually flee. Because of unrighteous practices that was going on all around him. And the Lord told me to tell you, 
in this hour. It's time to cut off folk from you that are not living righteously. I'm not talking about world people. I'm talking about church folk that will not turn. You see, we have to understand that this is a spiritual thing. And I'm going to say something. I know people might not sound good, but I got to say what God told me to say. If they left us, why are you running with them? And you know they left with a bad spirit, though. Y'all, listen at me good. There are some people God will allow to come among us for a season, and he will allow them to leave in the right spirit. Yes, he will. But when you know people have left with evil, especially against the leaders of God, and you are permitting them to fellowship with you, you are bringing detrimentalness to your ministry. You are opening a portal from hell. See, the enemy comes to rob kill, steal, and destroy. So, you know, the Lord had told Lot to get out of there. People didn't want to turn. And, you know, his wife didn't want to leave that good stuff that was behind. But some people you need to move forward from and don't look back. <laughs> You're not being ugly. Leave forward from them and don't look back and just pray for them. But have no soul tie with them because it can cause when destruction to come to fall on you in a place that was not meant to be because every time destruction comes it does not necessarily is going to happen to all of us at one time but it's going to happen to the wicked among us see wicked people are people in the body of Christ that come in and refuse to turn away from their evil doings. And so when you know that. I don't care if it's your mama. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care if it's your best boon coon. Walk away so you can help them. And let me tell you what's going to happen when disaster hit. It's going to hit them. But they're going to look over at the kingdom. And they're going to see. I made the wrong choice. And it's going to cause them to turn back to God. You see, our responsibility in this last hour is soul winning. We got some souls out there that God wants to shine the light through us that they be drawn out of darkness. But it won't be happening if we're complaining like they're complaining about how hard times are. About what the enemy is doing. I don't give the devil credit with my mouth about what he is doing. He said, think on these things. Things that are pure. Things that are lovely. Things of a good report. Uh, we have the word of God to keep us rooted and grounded in this time that we're living in. But we've got to live out of the mouth of God. Yes, that's what Noah did. He lived out of the mouth of God. Over in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 7, it tells you that, 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 that Noah feared God. Uh, so he feared him so that he walked by faith and what he said. Uh, now that fear is not one of God being a booger bear. It's one of reverence him for who he was. Uh, I might want to do some things, but I know God is an omnipresent God. Uh, that means he's everywhere at every time. Uh, so Noah said, I will be careful how I conduct myself uh, wherever I go because God is everywhere around me at every time. And the church has lost respect for God. So destruction comes uh, out of opening the gates of letting hell come in. 
I told you, we can't do things the way the world does it. We can't think the way the world thinks. Uh, glory to God. Jesus let the religious folk know what the kingdom of God was. Lot had to eventually flee because of unrighteous practices. And Jesus proclaimed it would be so in the last days. The churches that John saw, the revelator, he saw every church. And there's not but one church that came to the fullest of the report of God. And that was the church of Philadelphia. The others were lukewarm or not warm enough. And, and that's where things have been. But I don't think it's going to remain that way after we leave here this week. I, I, I believe God called us to this place that we leave with the oil of the anointing on us. I'm re reminded of those virgins that didn't have enough oil in the lamp. And Bishop Gatlin spoke it out last night. He said, come get some oil for your lamps. And, 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 and listen, folks sat back with their arms folded up and wouldn't move. But I tell you what's going to happen when the disaster comes. They're going to get scared and they're going to run to you and say, give me a little of that oil you got. That's what those virgins did. Uh, give me a little. And they said, no, 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 no. I can't give you none of my oil. My oil was set up for my vessel. My God, my God, my oil was set up. And if I let some of my oil out, uh, I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. So the oil of God is our light right now. Yes, 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 yes. Matthews will give you what the tribulation saw. I'm giving you the scriptures. Y'all need to go home and get in the word. Y'all need to be at Bible study. Y'all need to be at Sunday school. YP, whatever word teaching study they got, you need to be in there. And the reason why you're going is to get your mind right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have to eat the word of God on a daily basis to feed us into who we are. So when trouble comes, we know that we can stand. Isaiah said, have you not known? Have you not heard? This God that we serve, he never gets weary. He has us. But we getting weary because we don't have confidence in him in the time of trouble. In the time of famine in the land, Abraham fared richer than any time. Because God made a promise to him. God has made promise to us. Jesus became poor that we become rich. I'm not teaching a prosperity message today. I'm trying to tell you that God wants to establish his covenant promises in our life so it can be established in the earth. So when the people in darkness look on the church, they will see the glory of God in our life operating. Then they will want to come out of darkness. But with what they're seeing now, they're saying, if that's what it takes, I got that going on. But this manifestation time, Jesus said that we would do greater works. Where, where, where are the greater works? Greater works comes with greater faith in God. What is faith in God? Confidence in God. That if he said it, he shall do it. I said to you earlier about Rita. I said to you how the Lord said to us to prepare, and it was two weeks before the storm, but when you pray, God will prepare you. Lot had to flee, and let's go to Queen Esther. They talk about Esther. Esther was another grace of God. God puts his place, people in places, unusual places that somebody would look on the world and say they're not supposed to get blessed. But that grace that you see in the scripture is what Bishop Gatlin was talking about the other, last night. Grace in the eyes of God is the favor of God. You've been graced 
with a new day this morning. And the book of Lamentations says every morning is a new day of grace, a new day of mercy. So that's a new day of favor, a new day of mercy. God will cause men to give to you because you have committed to respecting who he is. We need to prepare ourselves spiritually. Oh, we got a lot of stuff. Some of us got too much stuff. And we're not helping nobody with it. I've seen saints with three cars sitting up in the yard. And a member walking. You won't even give them a car. That's the kind of church God wants us to be. Uh-huh, uh-huh. See, when we get together and there's no lack among us, they're going to see the love among us, and they're going to know we are of God. But we've got to be helpers one to another when the storm comes. Now, because somebody, a sister in, the, in your body of Christ may have not prepared for that storm, that don't mean you leave them out there for the weather to dam damage them up. We ought to restore our sisters and brothers in the Lord when storms come. Lot, and we talk about Esther. Esther was set up in that palace with the king. And all during the time that Esther was set up, she handled herself as a woman of grace. She handled herself as a woman of honor. And she knew her people were in danger. But what she did, God set her up in that place to prepare for what was about to happen. Just like he did with Joseph. He set Joseph up in that place, a wealthy place in that palace, because he knew the famine was going to hit. God will set you up in some places that when disaster comes, we can be blessings one to another. Yes, he will. When we went for the storm and we had people came with us, we were fully ready. We had, water. We had done everything because God had spoken to us. There was a young woman came with us that had three or four children. But because she followed us, that young woman left Atlanta, Georgia with $10,000 of help. You can just hold on. You need to stay on the ship. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. You need to stay wherever the blessings are flowing. Many, too many people looking out in another place, but your safety is going to be in God. Let me go to working hard, providing for your family. In the book of Proverbs, it tells a woman how she is to do for her home, how she's to prepare for her home. And I hope we got women like that today. But in your preparation, it says about working hard. I want you to understand that your job is not your source. Your job is your seeding. Yes, 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 yes. Your job is your place to you would receive seeds to plant. God is the source of that job and always be mindful of it. Even when jobs are being laid off and jobs are saying they're going to not give a raise and all of these things, don't get worried. If you get laid off, God got a better door. I'm a witness. My husband got laid off. And I, I had stopped working to take care of my aunt because she helped my mama raise us. And I wasn't worried about taking off because my husband had a good job, Sister Moore. So I had already asked him if they had to put in a nursing home, could I take care of her? He said, sure, baby. And I said, oh, God, thank you. I got a call in March, and there her daughter was put in the hospital, and they say, Peanut, you can come get her. You're going to have to see about her. And I took her, Sister Moore, and I was glad. I wasn't worried. See, I was depending on Clarence. I, I thought I was depending on God. I was depending on Clarence. This was in March. In June, Clarence got a pink slip. But I want y'all to know we didn't miss a meal. 
I want y'all to know we didn't miss a bill. Because I was committed to do what God said, God took care of us. And it was three years before he got a good paying job. And God gave him triple for his. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm telling y'all. God gave him triple, God gave him triple, God gave him triple. But we stayed faithful to God in the midst of the storm. In the midst of the hard times, uh, we kept on giving. He did house plans on the side. He paid his tithe. We paid them tithe. Mom, Amy didn't get no, I didn't get no check from her. I know y'all think about the check. But I had her two years without the check because her daughters didn't have insurance on her. So she was saving up for her burial. And so I didn't start getting anything from her until she was almost about gone. But God took care of our bills. My daughter had just gone to college. We had good insurance. And I said, Lord, my baby over there, Sister Moore, you know how that is. And, and she ain't got no good insurance. I said, Lord, I don't want her to go into Grady. I heard that's the hurt. worst hospital in Georgia. I said, Lord, you promised me. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. I'm talking about a famine time. My God, my God. And she got a little job working in the school at Clark University. And she got favor with the head of the university. He fell in love with her. She called me and said, Mama, the dean called me in. Guess what? They're going to carry me on the school insurance until I graduate. And that had never been done. Now, but what I'm trying to say you in the midst of what we're going through, God always has a way of escape for us. Uh, but we've got to trust and have confidence in God when the storms come. And I'm going to stop because I'm almost up to the moment. I'm going to stop. But I'm going to say this. Jesus left a good example to us about your work. The fishermen, the men of God were fishermen. And they set out to fish. And they kept trying to set out the fish. They kept dropping their net. But they couldn't get nothing. But at one word from Jesus. He said, you drop your net where well, I tell you to drop it. And they say, Master, but we've been toiling all night long. I'm trying to tell you, you don't have to toil in what you're going through. Give it to Jesus. And Jesus said, just do what I say. And they dropped their nets and they got the, a harvest so big, the nets begin to break. So it doesn't matter what it looks like going on around you. Jesus has promised to take care of you. You can count on God. But can he count on you? God bless you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Disaster plan. She gave us a disaster plan. I hope you were listening closely. We got to refocus. We, we, we have our mind on the wrong thing, and we're not prepared. So we got to refocus. We've gone way, 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 way off in left field, but we got to come back. Thank you, Missionary Narcis. You richly blessed us. I allowed her to go over the time because I, it just hit me yesterday as I ran around here and said, it's time. One more minute, time, and you already up. I said, you know what? She's just greedy women. So, you know, I know you all wouldn't mind if I let her go over because y'all are greedy. Y'all are greedy. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, sometimes you just have to, mm, the light turns on, you have to face reality. You're not going to get enough. Oh, but there is some more. We are getting ready for our uh, last Bible study class, and oh, I know it's going to be something else today. I'm going to ask that uh, missionary Doris Kelly, I placed her up here today. I'm trying to spread you out enough, ladies, so that you can reach every woman in your class. 
That's the way I teach. I teach to reach every student in my class, every student. I told my principal, I said, no student, I don't care how smart, how not smart, whatever, they will not stay under me for a whole year and not learn anything. I say, if they do, I'm going home, if that happens. And it has not happened. <laughs> me and the Holy Ghost got it covered. Hallelujah. I just pray and the Holy Ghost give me how to reach that child that's never been reached. Never been reached. Had problem after problem after problem. But when they got to Miss Moore, eh, I taught one baby. She was fourth grade. And her mom taught school in, in another, uh, another school. But they always 